Hey, what's going on? Back in it again. Uh, this video right here that I'm making is about lease purchases. <laughs> now, I mean, I heard videos before about lease purchases. People tell you, oh, no, nah, don't do it, man. It's not good. It's bad, you know. And then you got other people that say, you know, do as you heart, you know, do what you need to do. Um, don't let nobody stop you from doing what you want to do and so on and so forth. I'm here to tell you I feel both ways. <laughs> um, when I started driving trucks, I already knew what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go with it. And that being said, I knew one day I wanted to go on my own truck. Now how I was going to get my own truck, I had no idea. Um, how I got this one, I got it from a Freightliner dealership in Dallas, Texas. So, here's the thing. Um, if you do plan on getting your truck from a dealership, one thing that you don't know or they don't tell you until you actually get that far into looking um, is that they want uh, two years of 1099 within your last three years. So, that's something I did not know. Um, luckily, I've been doing 1099 for a few years at that point in time already. So, um, luckily, <sighs> damn phone call. I had to call him back in a second. So, luckily, um, luckily, I was already in that far. Um, how I started, I started with an owner operator, and um, I was doing team for about a year and a half, and that was flatbed. I didn't know much about flatbed. I just know it's a lot of work. I was slowly getting the hang of it, but I was more focused on driving at that point. And I was doing a lot of night driving. And you know, he'll do the day driving pickups and so on and so forth and deliveries. Um, once I got that experience, I tried going company. Um, and that was fun for about a short period of time until I got fired. And that happened because of uh, <laughs> obstruction. Basically, as I'm going to say it, anybody know that's a trucker know what I'm saying. Um, other than that, um, oh, I'm sorry, striking, striking object, something like that. I forgot what it said. It was so long ago. It's not on my record no more. That's what really matters. But anyways, um... After that, I worked for an owner operator, a different one. Um, the coolest cat I ever met for him. Um, I drove his truck for about two years. And um, he really showed me what it was kind of like being an owner operator, a truck breakdown. I was all taking it to the dealer, getting parts and fixing it myself, or he'll fix it and show me how he fixes it. Um, he had three trucks or two trucks at the time and bought a third one so he was just now he was just starting to grow his fleet you know so i was learning a lot from him um fuel savings uh maintenance savings uh, driving efficiently on the road as far as driving the slow speed you know versus driving faster um avoid toll roads saving that kind of money you know i found all this other stuff so other than that, it was real fun. I worked when I wanted to work too. He didn't pressure me about doing 3,000 miles a week. You know what I'm saying? He didn't pay me that 50-50 split after fuel. You know, he paid me like a company driver, but a really uh, um, higher. He paid me higher than I, your, any company driver paid. So, I work as I'm paid. So, I, you know, kept it up, kept his truck, took care of it, you know, like I would take care of mine. Um, it went from there so after that I decided to do my first no I actually worked as a 1099 contractor for another company which was the worst company to work for out of Jersey I did that for about eight months that had me to the point where I started smoking cigarettes I was under so much stress I had to quit cigarettes and quit the job so when I got through all that I came across my first lease purchase gig 
and that experience was nice i felt like i have a little bit more freedom as far as you know what i wanted to do versus being forced where to go um i didn't do all 48 states anymore um that jersey job i did which i did like it it's just the other stressful points um as far as dealing with dispatch or uh breakdowns or um DOT because of their safety record and that's another huge thing about truck companies you need to know the safety records the higher the safety record is the more you got to talk to the more you got to sweat through weight stations and such and roadside inspections so um the first lease purchase uh i was making good money um i had was averaging 15 to 1700 a week um my truck payment was 430 um it took out 200 a week for maintenance we made it 630 and then i think they was charging me 100 a, a week for insurance and that was on a 13 cascade so that was okay um that was a walk away lease but you know unfortunately i didn't have to walk away they kind of opened the door for me and let me out and that came about a year and a half down the road where they feel like me and the dispatcher wasn't getting along which we weren't um and just small stuff like this that was late three times in the past year so really small stuff this is this stuff like this lets you know that even though you're paying the truck payment you're paying for the fuel you're paying for the insurance you're putting the money aside for the maintenance the truck still isn't in your possession it's not yours it's theirs so that's the truth I want to tell people. You're doing lease purchase, you can call yourself an independent contractor, whatever you want to. But in reality, you're a company driver with a little bit more leeway, a lot more responsibility. Um, and at the end of the week, the actual company driver might have made more than you. Might. But um, my first lease purchase job, they didn't. Sorry, I just ran too damn hard. I was doing 3,500 miles a week sometimes, and at a you know a dollar and 15 cent a mile, you know I was doing all right. Um, so after that ended, I got so used to lease purchase, you know my idiot self said, well let me do it again. This time I do it better. I've learned a lot doing my first lease purchase with fuel prices, fuel um you know routes to take uh i learned more shippers and receivers because you know i've had more experiences i had more experience with breakdowns like my dpf filter getting clogged i don't know if y'all ever had that when your engine got derated and you had to drive like that for so long i mean i had a point where my truck was cutting off of me every five ten minutes and i had to cut it back on and keep driving to get it back to a shop all the way uh, you know 800 miles stuff like that so that was so the second company I did lease purchase for is the company I'm still with now now here's the thing whether if you're doing good with lease purchase or you're struggling every day you're losing money whether you see it or not and that's just the truth that's that's just a fact you're losing money every day for the same load that you're pulling for a dollar and 12.7 cent or whatever a mile the same person as an owner operator is getting paid a dollar and 70 dollar 80 maybe two bucks a mile same load same weight same route same destination so when you see stuff like that even though you ain't got to find that load you ain't got to deal with brokers or agents you don't got to you know, um, you ain't got your own authority or where the case is. That's you losing money. You losing money doing lease purchase. Now, if you're doing lease purchase with a with a with a with a plan, then I ain't got nothing to say about it. But if you're just trying it out and hoping that you can do five years for the sake of doing five years on that truck that way, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's, it's, it's going to be hard. I wish I wish the best for everybody because it's not easy. Um, and nothing I like to do is I like to visit family a lot of places as well. I really do. Uh, 
whether it's Chicago, Ohio, St. Louis, Texas, Florida, Atlanta, New York, you know, Seattle. So I want that freedom again to do all 48. This company doesn't do all 48 to go as far as Colorado and East. I've been to New York one time. You know, other than that, they stay generally in the Midwest, South and Southeast, which is okay. So, um, their lease purchase, what I ended up doing is I had to make a decision whether to keep my lease purchase going the way I wanted to, which that one, they did it differently. So I was paying $547 a week for the truck. Um, they was taking so much a mile for maintenance, so it could be anywhere between two and two fifty a week, depending on how many miles I drove. Um, the good thing is, if I did take a week off, they wouldn't charge me that two two fifty a week. It'd just be the truck payment and the insurance and whatever else you know, people med and um, stuff like that. You know, um, the New York sticker thing and all that stuff. Um. But when it came out to the end of the month, I was paying close to 3000 a month for a Cascadia, uh, a 15 Cascadia. It had 100,000 miles on it when I did get it. Um, the first lease purchase, that truck had um, 250,000 miles when I first got it. So, um, the Cascadia, the second one, was naked. It had no side fairings, no rear fairings. It had no, um, it had one fuel tank. Anybody listening to me, listen closely. It had one 150 gallon fuel tank on the driver's side. Or depending on what truck you get, if you got a T680, it'll have two 75 gallon tanks. Um, so with that being said, it was, it was a eco tractor. You know, so you can haul more weight. That's what it was designed for. It had a smaller engine, and then the horsepower was turned down probably to about 400. Um, and it was governed. That's another thing. If you're a lease purchase and you're making truck payments and your truck is governed, it's not yours. The only reason your truck should be governed if you run through Canada, which is supposed to be governed at 65, you run Canada ever. Um, so, this is the kind of stuff I learned doing these lease purchases. So, not only that, this company monitors your speed. Could be good, whatever. But if I'm driving, going 65 on the highway, which the truck is governed at, and the speed limit goes from 70 to 55, and say you didn't slow down at the same time or you're going to slow traffic, if you go 5 or 6 or 7 miles over the speed limit, it'll blink at the safety department and they're recorded now one time ain't enough you, you have to do about at least 30 events in one week from the catcher attention or if you go over 75 miles an hour unless you in texas or out west you should never be going faster than 75 so stuff like that put you on safety hold you got to go in and talk to these people you know stuff like that and they got to let you know what's going on and They've got a big old GPS Google Earth map showing you where you did it at, when you did it. Don't even, don't even lie to them. Don't try. You shouldn't lie anyway. You shouldn't have to lie. So that's the kind of stuff I kind of got tired of as far as doing the lease purchase. I have all that responsibility. You know, the maintenance account ain't mine. If I don't keep the truck or whatever. And, I came across some owner operators and they were saying, man, instead of you trying to upgrade your lease truck from a 15 to a 16 or 17, go get your own truck. Now at that point in time, I, had to, I didn't have a lot saved up. I have, realistically, I had five grand at that point. I had five grand saved up. Um, I had money, but I had it, it's more on hold for other stuff. Not, I mean, my five grand of my own personal money is what I had saved up. I have money saved up for other things, like, you know, other things. That's just put it like that. So, um, they would say, man, just look at trucks, keep looking, don't stop looking. So I'm all over the internet. I was looking at a uh, truck paper and I was looking at, you know, um, what's the other one? Um, uh, something finder. You know, I was just looking. 
I came across this website, Dallas Freightliner Dealership, because I was originally looking for a Coronado. I wanted a Coronado. Um, I wanted to get like an 07 the first time because I didn't want no region on it. And as long as it had under a million miles, I was straight. No, it was my first truck. They were hard to find and banks wouldn't finance them. Not without more money now, they wouldn't finance them. So I had to get a truck that was uh, 08 or newer. And even then, they still want you to, they kept telling me that I need to get like a, a 2012 or newer. So I started looking around and I came across this truck, long story short. I looked at a lot of trucks. I tried looking at auctions. I tried um, going through BMO Harris Bank. I tried my own credit union. You know, I tried a couple different things. Um, and it's hard. And it's come to a semi truck it is really hard a lot a lot of banks and financial institutions don't want to deal with trucks so basically what it came down to is i found this truck at a dealership and i was looking at a couple key factors um the idle time um i was looking at the body um the engine and transmission drive the drives yes tires yes um, does everything work? Yes. You know, ultimately, do I like it? Yes, you know. So I went in to take a look at it one weekend. I wish I could have had everything done that day. I was so excited. Um, and they actually had this thing called down payment match. So an example being, if I walked in there and I had three grand in my pocket, and that particular truck that I was looking at had a down payment match option on it, they'll match you up to, they'll match what you have for down payment so the truck is 60 grand you got three grand they'll match it with three that makes it six thousand that's ten percent down sounds good don't it so i know what you're thinking you're thinking about credit oh he must got good credit well i do i do got good credit that's because my focus uh three or four years prior to me doing this was getting rid of all my uh, creditors, um, getting it all the way down to I got to worry about this one person. And that's one person everybody got to worry about as long as they live in this country. IRS. So, got it all the way down to just them. Got rid of all my, got all my credit cards caught up. Got rid of all my creditors, bill collectors. Jumped my credit score from, you know, a low, bad credit score up to a good credit score. Now, that one of the three things, like I said, a dealership requires is they want two, ten, two years of 1099s within the past three years. The second thing is, depending on how much scratch you got, how much money you got, um, a credit score 600 or higher. Um, if you have a 650, you're in good shape. If you have 700, you're in excellent shape. And I'm not talking about Credit Karma 700, I'm talking about FICO score 700. Credit Karma is a third party um, reporting agency or whatever. So if your credit score says 650, your FICO might be up to 50 points less than that. So you might really be at 600. Stuff you might want to look into. Like I said, I've done so much research on this stuff. I can say a whole much more. But I'm really trying to keep it simple for people that's kind of looking for stuff and they ain't got much data on their phones. Um, so that was the second thing was your credit. And of course, the third thing is who you putting the truck on with. Of course, I already with a company. So once I told them I'm putting on the company I'm already with, all they needed to see was... Um, some kind of leather um what is it a letter proving that i'm going on with that company or so on and so forth whatever the case was which wasn't a problem so um once i had all those three things and it was in process it took less than a week to get a word back and say you're good to go you know we're going to come in and do the paperwork let us know so when i went to go do the test drive the first thing that i did was um check all the gauges, I checked the oil, I did a pre-trip. 
you know, there's four things that need to be done to the truck before I was willing to take it. And that's four things that I was, that I was able to see. There was one more thing that I couldn't see, and that one thing was it needed a bellows, a turbo exhaust. Couldn't see it because of the side fairings. That was my first expense, and I had to pass DOT with the company I was putting on with uh, before I can get it registered with them and all that stuff. So keep an eye out if you go to a dealership or Lone Mountain or Quality Leasing or whoever. You know, check everything out. And before you sign that paperwork, get it fixed because you know that wherever you're going to put it on with unless you got your own authority you're going to have to pass the DOT inspection so that's the other thing um, I didn't find out to already sign the paperwork and try to do an inspection they told me that and I had to spend $1,300 um, before I even did my first load to get a new turbo exhaust put on I put two new brakes and drums and I had to get reflective tape. That's the thing I didn't even catch. When I did the pre-trip on the truck at the dealership, they got it, uh, they took it to the Texas whatever authority to do the DOT on the thing and said it passed. It was kind of curious to me because I know something was kind of off, but I couldn't think of what it was. And that was the reflective tape. There's no reflective tape on the mud flaps on the back of the truck. So how the hell it passed the DOT inspection? There's no reflective tape on it. Like stuff like that I didn't catch because I was too excited on getting the truck. Don't get so caught up in your excitement that you overlook something small as reflective tape. So that's that's kind of one thing I want to tell you. Um, I thought this one truck just got stuck on the railroad tracks. But <laughs> um, I can't talk about that either. I ain't gonna say that. I ain't gonna tell you that story. So anyways, um, once you, once I got the truck, I had to get the lease purchase truck back. So when I gave the lease purchase truck back, I told them I was giving it back. I was already at the terminal, turned the keys in. I had a maintenance reserve of like over four grand. They took all of that, none of that was mine. And I'll do this video if I have to. I hope I don't have to, but they did send me a letter telling me that I owed them some more money for that truck. This is the downside of lease purchase. It's a walk away lease, but they were still trying to charge you for something. If, they, if you took $4,200 of money that I drove the truck to make, how am I gonna owe you anything else? I turned the truck in at the end of the month. So if you go by the first of your truck payments, I didn't have it on the first. They prorated me for three weeks I guess and that's what it was. They charged me for three weeks um, to like March 21st or something. They had that truck back in their possession on the 25th of February. I did not drive the truck for that long. So how are you gonna charge me for that? That's one thing I wanted to state. And then the second thing is, if you spent over $4,000 of maintenance fixing the truck, which there was nothing to fix. I pretty much gave it back the same way they gave it to me. I didn't change anything. I didn't alter anything because I already knew what I was going to do with the truck. I wasn't going to do anything, add nothing to it, you know, none of that. So they're going to tell me that I owe them an additional, you know, grand or so on maintenance. They have their own shop. There's nothing on that truck that costs that much money that if it was uh, DOT standards, you know, it passed the annual inspection. If it passes the annual inspection, why are you fixing it? I've done nothing to the truck. I didn't. I didn't tear up the truck, you know what I'm saying? I didn't jump on the bed, you know what I'm saying? I didn't uh, go off-roading with it. The tires wasn't bald. Um, the seats go up and down. There's no air leaks. So what are you spending all this money on? You got any maintenance records to prove that you've spent all this money on this truck? I have it in this piece of paper. Now, I could show it, but it's going to show the company name and stuff like that. So if you know, if you listen to what I've been saying so far, you already know what company I'm talking about. Just by some of the little small things that I said. So, um, it's a very distinct, um, um, it's very distinct things that they have with their company. Especially if they're watching it themselves. They know this them. They know me. Some of the people might already know me. But... That's what I wanted to say. I didn't make, mean to make this video super long. Um, 
I have a lot to say because I feel like I've been on this long journey and it's nowhere over yet, nowhere near over. Now to the point where I'm about to stop working for this company and I'm gonna switch to Landstar. And I'm in the process of doing that right now as we speak. My next goal is to educate myself on dealing with agents and brokers, dispatching myself, um, negotiating, and so on and so forth. That's my next goal. So, that's the next thing I want to get after that is my own authority. I have goals, and this is just the way I'm doing them. I had my dispatcher ask me, um, why are you quitting? Why are you looking for another job? Why is the reason why anybody looks for another job? It's make more money. Simple. And that same day she was wondering about why I was looking for another job, I ended up missing out two good loads she could have told me about. But she didn't because she was more worried about why I was looking for another job. <laughs> Other than that, people, I'm out here. Um, I'm trying to do this video thing more frequently. I'm actually trying to wait till I get me a GoPro or something. That way I can have some road footage. So instead of you just staring at me in my dingy clothes, um, I'm not as big as I look. I'm wearing just an extra size shirt. I actually do work out on a regular basis. <laughs> but anyways, um, and if you want to troll, you can go ahead. I care less. I really do. I'm out here doing it, and I've been doing it, and I'm going to keep on doing it. So, I'm all back at y'all.